Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about binary serialization. In the previous videos, you saw how JSON and XML serialization can be used to convert an object to a string or a text file. Binary serialization serializes an object into a binary format, which is just a byte string. Binary serialization is faster than XML or JSON serialization. And the data file generated is smaller in size when compared to other serializations. So if you want to save space or if you want to save processing power, then binary serialization is a very good option. Unlike XML or JSON, the output of binary serialization is not human readable. So in a sense, it is more secure. The player can't change or edit the values stored inside a binary file. However, binary serialization is platform dependent. It will only work on .NET platform. And the non-human readable feature of binary serialization makes it very difficult for modders to apply any changes or add any new content to your game. These features result in very specific use cases of binary serialization. You can use it to save your critical game data in a very compact form. Binary serialization is also commonly used for game save files because you don't want the player to mess up or accidentally change any data inside the save file. So the XML or JSON format won't work in this situation. To demonstrate the use of binary serialization, I will use the same setup as in my previous videos. And since the serialization workflow is very similar to the XML serialization workflow, so I will start from the same code base. It is important that you check out the JSON and the XML serialization videos beforehand, whose links will be in the description below. To give you a very brief overview of XML serialization, what we need is first a serializer, which is of the type of the class that we want to serialize. Then we need a file stream where our serialized data will be stored. And then we use the serializer.serialize function to serialize our object. And when we close the stream, the file with our XML data is stored onto the disk. And in the deserialization process, we again create a serializer. We read from the file into a file stream and then the serializer uses the deserialize function to convert that stream into an object. Now the only difference in the XML process and the binary serialization process is your serializer. For XML, we have used the XML serializer class and for binary serialization, we will have to use the binary formatter class which we can find inside using System dot runtime dot serialization formatters and binary. Since we have included this namespace, we can create a new object of the type binary formatter. And this will act as our serializer in the place of uh, a variable of the type XML serializer. We can create a new instance of our binary formatter. It takes no argument and we can then rest of the process are exactly same as the XML serialization. Now we need a file stream to save our serialized data and we can create a new file stream by using our file stream class. File stream is equal to new file stream and here we can specify the name and location of our newly created file. In the case of binary formatter uh, the serialized data is just a blob of bytes and it is not in the form of a text, it is not in the form of an XML. So you can assign it any extension that you want because it is not going to open in, with other applications. So you can't use a text editor or Visual Studio to look at your binary formatted data. It will only open with your application. So you are free to assign it any extension and many uh, games use their custom extension, custom file systems 
to save their binary formatted data. So let's give it a name player data list binary and let's give it a new file extension. Let's call it XYZ. And the file mode will still be the same because we are creating a new file with this name a uh, custom extension where our uh, binary formatted data would be saved. We can remove the XML serialization code and in the next step we will actually serialize our object and which can be done by using our binary formatter and serialize function. It needs the stream where your serialized data is going to go which in our case is our newly created file stream and it will need the object that you want to serialize which in our last example was player data list so we'll use that again and finally we have to close our stream so that the file can be stored onto our disk so this was our serialization function using the binary formatter the only change that you have witnessed is the change in your serializer instead of using the XML serializer we are using the binary formatter class and same as this in our deserialization function instead of using the XML serialization the only change that we need is to use the binary formatter so we can write binary formatter is equal to new binary formatter and again create a new file stream and during deserialization we are just going to open the same file uh, name and the file mode would be open so new file stream with the same name as our serialization save file and finally we need to specify the file mode as okay. so this will create a new file stream for us and we just need to call the binary formatter dot deserialize function and the argument it needs is your stream which we have just read from the file and it will return an object which we can convert it to the object type that we need which is player data list in this case and we will assign it to our player data object player data list object so this is done from the deserialization part now we can come inside unity and check it in action now inside unity let's give some initial values to our data which we will store using our binary formatter so let's create two player data classes give them some random values and then we can go inside play mode and hit serialize and then we can see in our project folder that a new file would be created with these values now I can go inside my unity project folder and you can see besides the assets folder I have created a new file called player data list binary with the XYZ extension and you are not able to open it using notepad or your text editor unlike our previous examples where my XML file or my player data file were human readable and I can also edit them directly outside of my application in a normal text editor to demonstrate the deserialization operation I will reset my player data list to zero so that it has no player data and when I hit deserialize in play mode it will fetch the data stored in my binary formatted file and then populate my player data list so I am in a play mode hit deserialize and you can see uh, that the data which I serialized has been recreated using the binary saved file so this concludes this series on serialization I have covered the most commonly used serialization methods 
json xml and binary there are numerous use cases of serialization if you want to communicate with a web service if you want to save data save game progress etc if you have any questions or queries please write them in the comment section i will reply to them as soon as possible